I rise in favor of my amendment, which would prohibit federal funding for the countering group extremist activity working or implement any recommendations from the group. In 2021, Democrats and the Biden regime unjustly used January 6th to prop up this woke working group to provide cover for unjustly targeting members of our military. Under the Biden regime, DEI instruction and management has reached new heights that threaten to weaken the bond between America's armed forces and its civilian leadership and undermine our military effectiveness and readiness. All of our men and women in uniform deserve to have the best tools needed to carry out their mission to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Unfortunately, liberal ideology undermines this mission. In order to stand up to China, Russia, terrorists, our military needs to project, to project strength, not cultural wokeness. Mr. Chair, to be clear, January 6th was an attack on America our democracy, and this institution, which we have all taken an oath to serve. This shouldn't be controversial, but service members who swear an oath to the Constitution should not try to overthrow the United States government. My colleagues allege that the department's efforts to counter extremist activities unfairly targets conservatives. There's nothing in the countering extremist activity working group's final report to substantiate that allegation because violent extremism, regardless of its political or partisan leaning, is a danger to all of us and to this democracy. But there can be no denial that far-right extremism is surging across the country at a much higher level than that of left-wing extremism. A recent study showed that violent extremist acts in the United States were far more likely to be associated with far-right ideologies like white supremacy than for any far-left alternative. In fact, the level of violence perpetrated by right-wing extremists in this country is on par with, if not higher than, that of Islamist extremists. In our country, where service members have access to critical national security information and assets, individuals motivated by extremist ideologies can pose an outside threat to our national security when they move beyond fair and legal expression of contentious issues and into subversive or even violent actions. The so-called countering group extremist activity working has been weaponized and implemented to almost exclusively target Republicans, conservatives, and libertarians serving in the military. And yet by its own metrics, it has been a massive waste of money and time. The Defense Department continues to spend large amounts of time and money to combat extremism, yet its own analysis of the situation shows that it's entirely unnecessary. In fact, fewer than 100 service members have been subject to the discipline due to engagement in extremist activities. That's only 0.005% of the approximately 2.1 million active and reserve personnel. Clearly, extremism is not the problem that my colleagues on the left and media outlets made it out to be. The United States military is tasked with one mission, maintaining mission critical readiness to protect the American homeland. Sowing our armed forces with divisive rhetoric designed to pit races and genders against one another is not only morally wrong, it poses a very real threat to our national security. Yet the latest report from the Department of Defense Inspector General found that 78 service members were alleged to have advocated for the overthrow of the government in the past year alone. That is likely an undercount given reported challenges in gathering and compiling data across the military departments. Clearly, extremism in the military remains a persistent and serious issue, one that we should not take lightly, again, given the January 6th insurrection in which we know some service members and veterans participated. This fact alone should be deeply concerning to every single one of this in this chamber. Instead of taking this problem seriously, this amendment prohibits the Department of Defense from implementing recommendations designed to counter extremist activity in our military. This undermines unit cohesion, the readiness of our forces, and ultimately public trust in our military. Tackling extremism in our military is not about promoting wokeness, which my colleagues continue to be obsessed about. It's about protecting our people and our country. 
And that, sadly, also means preventing domestic terrorism and addressing the serious and persistent threat to our homeland. And it's also about restoring public confidence and trust in one of the most important institutions in our history and society. I urge my colleagues to reject this dangerous amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time.